You see the shirt I wear? Oh, wearing that's today? dope. That's dope. Wait, what is what does it say? Is that Virginia HBCU? Union? There yeah. we go. Virginia yeah, Union. I was looking at Virginia, Virginia Union. Union. Yeah, no doubt. All right, Shout HBCU. Out and, and Mike, look, it's HBCU week, and it's appropriate that uh, it, it was started uh, back in 1980 by Jimmy Carter. Who would think about all the things that Jimmy Carter was? Not only was he a Southerner, uh, he's a man of letters, and he's a man of faith. So uh, Jimmy Carter, when he got to the White House in 1976. Yeah, a lot of people in the Atlanta and, and Georgia area in general who really he relied on. And one of the people, I don't know if you know this, one of the people who had a direct line to, to Jimmy Carter in the White House was Martin Luther King Sr. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. MLK Sr. would call him up and say, hey, Mr. President, we got to talk. And, and, and one, there's one famous story where he called, he called uh, the, the White House and he was like, is the president busy? <laughs> it's like, uh, no, he no, can't. Not, uh, no, not really. <laughs> uh, uh, da Daddy King, Daddy King, he can't talk to you right now. Well, all right, well, tell him to call me back then. Sure. So uh, right. it's it's HBCU week, and we know how uh, significant this week is. It's, it's a very important week. You know, you think about uh, the history of HBCUs. The first one, Cheney University in, in Pennsylvania, uh, just right outside of Philadelphia, started in 1837, and that is... Just to put that in context, that is almost like 200 years after Harvard. So think about that. Mm. First HBCU, 1830s, Harvard and Princeton and Yale uh, started hundreds of years uh, earlier. So I'm just glad that we're in a yeah. space now that we can talk about it. And there are a lot of wonderful things, as you know, that are associated with HBCUs. Yeah, no, man. Um, you know, I've always had a special relationship with the HBCU community. I mean, because now you went to Point Park College. In Point Pittsburgh, Park. Not, yes. not an HBCU. All right? Not an HBCU. I went to I went to Loyola University in New Orleans. Definitely not an HBCU. In fact, we had a corner of the student student union that we dubbed Africa because all 15 of us used to hang out there. All right. So yes, no, <laughs> not, we had a black student union, but Which we were part? not an HBCU. <laughs> Which part of Africa were y'all claiming? Are y'all claiming a whole continent? <laughs> We're going to take everything. Uh, we didn't have enough people to represent the whole continent. But anyway, um, yeah, so, but uh, growing up in New Orleans, practically my entire family went to Xavier, uh, Xavier University in New Orleans. Um, yeah. A lot of friends from my high school went to Southern University in Baton Rouge. Uh, a few went to FAM uh, in, in Tallahassee. Uh, I felt like I went to a HBCU because McDonough 35 Senior High School was the first all-black high school in New Orleans. So I had I was at a I went to all black schools throughout my uh entire uh, you know primary education or, or and secondary education before I went to uh before I went to college. Um so I felt like I had something of an HBCU experience. Something of. I, I know I didn't get the real thing. But I felt like I had something of it. And, and I went to Loyola, great university, enjoyed my four years there. I went there because of the money and the journalism program. Uh, and at the end of the day, I decided to stay home uh, in New Orleans and go to school. Um, but also, too, man, just another, we, we're talking about, you know, actual HBCUs. And I mean, we could literally spend a month, you know, just on the content that comes from the stories of the significance and the individuals that have been produced by HBCUs, and our HBCUs have helped shape this country's history, uh, not just for black people, but America as we know it. Um, I want to shout out a, a fictional HBCU, because uh, I'm 41, which means, yep. uh, you know, I was in my formative years in the 90s. I mean, who didn't watch A Different World and dream about going? You couldn't tell me Hillman wasn't real. When it was time for me to apply <laughs> to colleges, I was looking for like, well, where's Hillman College? I mean, because Hill A Different World... And one of the greatest uh, treats of my of my career was, you know, uh, at ESPN when I was able to reenact or be a part of reenacting the Different World Open, the one that Aretha Franklin sang. Um, oh yeah, you know, and that, and that yeah. opened with with the and, and reunite the original cast of a Different World. But just to be able to thank them, to be able to thank them for just the example that they set for me, because if you think about a Different World and what it meant for the culture, and what it meant for HBCUs. I mean, it, it, it allowed me to, 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 to view college uh, and yeah. college for black people in a, in a positive light. So I wanted to go to HBCU because of Hillman.
college uh, and, yeah, and my years yeah, of watching Mike. different worlds, 730 Central on Thursdays in there New it Orleans. Is. You know, a yeah. lot of people, a lot of people needed that affirmation uh, that you talked about. A lot of people just wanted to, from their from their early educational experiences, even before they had the language to articulate what they were feeling, they were feeling something. Yeah. If, if you weren't, if you weren't uh, privileged enough to go to one of these schools or you saw a lot of people who look like you or, pe or you were taught by those who look like you, if you weren't in that and you weren't in that situation, at times school could be uh, a very isolating experience. So exactly what you mm -hmm. said about the fictional uh, Hillman College and in a different world. All right. But think about that before a different world. That was a spinoff of The Cosby Show. Oh, I know he's yeah. been canceled. Rightfully so. I know. I got it. Right. But well, before we knew, rep HBCUs. Yeah. yeah. Before we knew yeah. who Bill Cosby really was, uh, we knew on the Cosby Show, and every week, I mean, there'd be some sweatshirt. You'd see something like Spellman, and then you'd see Wilberforce. So what's that? Central State, all of, Grambling, and you know, all over. He was not only representing uh, HBCUs on NBC, but also uh, donating significant amounts, uh, significant amounts of money to these schools. He did a lot uh, for historically black colleges and universities. So did Spike Lee. Uh, Spike Lee, who was an HBCU More, grad, Morehouse. Morehouse. Yeah. Morehouse. Yeah. So he did a lot. And there was some controversy. I remember it at the time when, when school days came out. Uh, and so, <laughs> half height. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Half height. Yeah. You're not my cousin yeah. anymore. You're not my cousin. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Big brother all Wake my up! <laughs> <laughs> great. Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. You think about that cast, though, by the way, Mike. The cast? Incredible. Like, Incredible. Oh, look, I look at a lot of Spike's movies, his early movies. Oh anybody who was anybody. Yeah. Wow. Anybody who was anybody. Wow. Yeah. But he did a lot for it. I, mean, I was talking, uh, talking with my wife about this the other day. Uh, she, she's a little younger than I am. Slightly. Slightly younger than I am. So she's saying, she, she said when she saw uh, School Days... She was so young, she thought, okay, maybe this is a Hollywood <laughs> representation of this college that doesn't exist. So I think that's part of it. Right. You know, depending on where you grew up, a lot of people just don't know about these schools, and they don't know the history of these schools, like why, why they're so significant in American history, because they didn't exist. They didn't exist. And so you have people, you have hundreds of thousands of people in this country who had no, had no educational outlets, and it was il even illegal uh, early for them to even learn. And so yeah. because, of, because of a lot of churches uh, and a lot of uh, brave people, a lot of strong people who were dedicated to their communities, this is how uh, HBCUs started. Yeah. And, 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 and after 1837, this kept popping up. You are, you, you are so professorial. It's really incredible. Like, every time you speak and you're teaching, uh, you're, you're like a lesson plan. Uh, a walking lesson plan is what you are. No, but we've also, I mean, just even in recent months, had something of an ongoing um, celebration of HBCUs, given our knock on wood future vice president of the United States, but for now, vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris, pride of HU, the Mecca, not to mention the late great Chadwick Boseman. So, you know, you have a lot of attention and the spotlight was was paid um you know to, to howard university in particular but hbcus in particular in general excuse me you know in the divine nine even the fraternities and sororities that got a lot of attention and people you know hopefully were curious enough to look into it and look into the people that they produced